What's up everybody? George T from the wagon here. The process has started. We're doing it. This bus is going to go IRS now. We pulled the motor, pulled the trans, I pulled on my Wagons West drop plates, everything out of it. The whole reason why we're doing this malarkey in the first place. So I'm going to be dropping this off to Steve Hansen to get this thing converted over to IRS. Look at that. Insane. Completely destroyed the axle. Mutilated the fulcrums. And the other one's beautiful still. So yeah, we're doing the IRS conversion. I've got this out. I gotta go through a charging issue I'm having with it. My alternator keeps spiking, goes up to 18, 19, then drops down to 12. So I'm gonna check into that right there and maybe just give her a general cleanup. I've never cracked into that motor yet. I built it in 2011. It's the very first motor I ever built. It's a 2332 and it's been going this entire time. I got the missus torn apart. Having that screamer checked out by Josh Honnell. My man's taking care of that. And we've got calipers we're gonna do an upgrade in here on. I got Willwood calipers that I purchased from Michael at Dove Fab as well, just to match my front old speed kit. Since I got the Willwoods in the front, we're gonna do the Willwoods in the back, because look how good they look through them BBS wheels. Dang. Those wheels are the poop. They just get eaten up, side years break. I mean, that's, that's got a nice little crack right there going all across that side gear, and that axle's been chewed up to no end right there. Arr. These are my CVs, but I need to go through and just rebuild them because they've been sitting on the shelf for a long time. And then we'll get this process going. I'm very excited about this. I've been wanting to do this for years and I'm finally pulling the trigger on it. My goal is to have it up and operational by buses by the bridge and I don't think that's too difficult of a task there. Here are the Dub Fab IRS adjustable spring plates. Beautifully built. They come with your spacers for your caps. We'll get these painted up black, like a satin black to match everything else we got going on. Another item I'm going to be addressing, when I did this modification on my bus for my exhaust cutout, everything lined up perfectly until it went through its first heat cycle. And then my tips did a little bit of zigging and zagging. If I do one slit on the side and just move it over to where it lines up again and then re-weld it, hopefully it gets where I want it to be. Motor and trans are out. Transmission's been sent off to Hanson's Transaxles. Got a couple upgrades we're gonna do. I picked up a 90 amper from Impy. Got that through Dubfab. We're gonna be changing mine out. This one is an original Bosch, and it's actually lifetime warranty, so I'm still gonna try and get it warrantied, but it's fluctuating. It's charging up to 19, 17, 15, 13, 12, 11. It's not being consistent, and I already blew my headlights up driving it at night one night. They just literally popped. So I'll be going through, redoing my CVs. I have them all taken apart. Got the axles blasted and painted. So I got those suckers drying right now. Just some rattle can. We blasted them, cleaned them up real well. So I got these from John at RC Trans. I traded him a set of Swayway axles for these because these were on his class 11 race car. I think he said they're GMKs. They've been peened. The center part's been cryo treated. So that's what that silver treating on theirs and the bearings have as well. I like them. I got my hardware cleaning up right there. I soaked in some WD-40 to get the major funk out of it. Clean them up in the solvent tank and they're good to go. So John made these indexing marks on here. This is what they call the cup side, like what would go to the cup on the transmission or the cup on your stub axle. And this is the drive side. That inner will be chamfered. I'll say that six more times like the last video. But that allows for ease, easier installation of the drive shaft to the CV joint. This line you see there is present on the cup side. I know that because I looked it up in a book. I know these things are like kryptonite nowadays, but an actual book that informed me of what needed to take place with it. I'll fill you guys in on that one right now. All right, so in this diagram right here, you see that is this cupped edge we're referring to. You can see the groove there. You see how there's no groove there and a groove there? This is not together, by the way, it's just sitting there. So the groove side facing the cup edge, and then this is our flat edge. And then they show you on this one, like where the, the chamfered edge on that one is for the drive line install. So I know that this one is correct, and this one is correct, and I got two more to build. So the basics of CV, big side, small side, small side, big side. I'm referring to these flanges you're seeing there. 
okay so it has to be offset like that and uh, there's a dude oh I watched this video today but he puts it together like this with no bearing in it and he pops them in one at a time and that's the way I built these and it was way easier than trying to hold those in with grease and trying to do the whole twist method in which is doable I mean that's how I took them apart but so much easier to pop them in one at a time way so just pop one in there take it over the other side pop one in there go to the next one pop one in there always bring it back to the middle again make sure that your line is still lined up and everything is still good now I can see there I'm still lined up to my mark I'm still big small big small Our new CB boots from Nevada Off-Road Buggy. I'm going to put some silicone on the inside. A little bit on that. Some on that. A little bit there. This is the hardest part, is getting this, this first part started. So, I got my fingers inside there with it. I'm trying to do this with the camera angle make life a lot harder. Okay, so once I've worked that lip my fingers are on the inside, and I'm making sure that that doesn't roll over. That's what you're trying to avoid. Once I actually get it on, you can just spin it and it'll get up to a certain point, okay? Now it's up to there. Gotta make it over that lip and that's not easy. We're gonna take a pick and we're going to put it in there. Now I make sure that I'm, I can feel that I'm on metal. So I haven't gone into any plastic anywhere. I can see it coming through inside there. We're not puncturing anything. We're just on that outside lip, okay? You gotta be careful when you're doing this because now you got a pokey on that side. But I'm bringing it in with the same pressure and do a turn until I can get it to walk over that lip right there. And once I get it all over it, meaning that all the way around is over that lip, pull this sucker out. And now it's just gonna be a matter of working it down that axle. And if you want to make it go faster, let's put a little more silicone in that dude. Okay, this is the main thing. You want to make sure you're not rolling that over there, okay? And that, boom. Once we get it there, back it up to it. It's up against there. We're going to end up clamping that, and that helps keep the right tension on that. If you put it inside there, your boot's going to be crammed. It's going to squirt the grease out of it. I got that groove there for a reason. So this sucker is actually ready to start putting back together. couple of project updates. The Thorn 67, I've got the entire exterior all blocked. So now we're starting the process of seam sealing. See what's going on there and there. We've already done the 3M self-leveling on the interior inside there, very difficult to see. But this is all shot in epoxy in there. My exterior is still poly primed. During one crazy weekend, I had access to two of the best in the business. I had Andy the Paint, Spikes Custom Paint, and Buddy Hale from Type 1 Restoration. And you better believe if I got someone like that attention, I'm going to ask questions all day long. So both of them told me my next step here, since we're in poly right now, is gonna be to put this thing into epoxy. So if you listen to Let's Talk Dubs, 
episode number 232 with Dud from Squeegees Customs. I just picked up some Squeegees suede epoxy finish that we're going to be doing on this in a red oxide. So this bus is going to be going the Titian red with the silver beige, I believe it's called. So we got a red oxide for the bottom that our base is going to shoot over and we got a white for the top and the interior where everything is going to go with the two-tone. Over here on the 66, this is like the full custom one. This is like a full stock restoration. This one is going crazy custom. Like, you see these handmade three-inch tubs that Virgil Boyer did for me? So we just got this thing in all epoxy everywhere. The kid's going through and learning some seam sealing. It's a little messy, but he'll clean that all up before all is said and done. And he gave us a nice little tutorial on that with the way that he does it. I still got blocking to do on this one. I uh, just trained the new, new kid this week on blocking and he did a really nice job on this one. I set him loose on that. I sprayed a, a, a Nova epoxy that I just didn't care for. It looked like Pebble Tech when I was done with it. The new guy, Ocean, I was teaching him on those. So he get the feel for sanding and then he just had a nice touch. He understood what I was trying to convey, so I had him tackle this one, and he did a fantastic job on it. We've got a lot of things hanging here that are gonna be going into epoxy prime and get everything going. This is the very last job that I'm gonna be bringing in for about a month or two. This is a 68 rewire. If you follow me on Instagram, this is Bert. I've featured him before. I've been working on Bert since 2007 or eight, something like that, but we just did a complete rewire on it, doing all our troubleshooting right now and going through that. I just got a gearbox back from Rancho for Eric Black's bus up there. Get that thing roadworthy again. We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of upgrades of this. So on this one, we're gonna be switching out to some Dubfab drop plates. Basically a Pro Street gearbox with the MP Rhino case on there as well. He's got a new motor coming from Busterations. Ronnie over there did his other motor that lasted 10 plus years. Eric is using him again to get another great motor. I believe this one's gonna be a 2276. So he's going up in displacement, hopefully up in power as well. Josh Honnell got my distributor back to me. That guy freaking rocks, man. I love it when people stand behind their work. And I don't even know if there were any mistakes made in it, honestly. But the fact that I said, hey man, I'm having a problem. He said, not a problem, ship it back to me. I ship it back to him freaking gets it rock and roll and sends it right back to me that's always appreciated man we got andy finch's car here he was here for the weekend for one crazy weekend and apparently his gearbox is giving him more problems again which just sucks uh, i'm so freaking over swing axle transmissions they can suck it there ain't a car in the market nowadays that runs a swing axle and there's a reason for that as a trash setup we are moving onward we're catching up to the rest of the world and we are going irs well we didn't get much done in this video actually a whole lot of nothing but there's more to come a lot more to come that's going to be a big job changing mine over to irs and if you're subscribed to this channel then you're going to know when i'm doing it and you can watch along with me hopefully so if you do like what you're seeing here hit that like button it's always appreciated it helps me out apparently with the algorithm with youtube comment below if you got a question about something if you have an idea for a video put it in a comment i read every comment there's not one that's made it past me so let me know what you think we're gonna see what we can do for you guys because I want to make a channel that you guys enjoy watching because I so far I'm enjoying making the videos. So together we're gonna do some fun stuff.